The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Some Pharisees came and said to Jesus, Get away from here, for Herod wants to kill you. He said to them, Go and tell that fox for me. Listen, I am casting out demons and performing cures today and tomorrow, and on the third day I finish my work. Yet today, tomorrow, and the next day I must be on my way because it is impossible for a prophet to be killed outside of Jerusalem. Jerusalem, Jerusalem, the city that kills the prophets and stones those who are sent to it. How often have I desired to gather your children together as a hen gathers her brood under her wings, and you are not willing. See, your house is left to you. And I tell you, you will not see me until the time comes when you say, Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Christ. I speak to you in the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Following our school chapel on Ash Wednesday, which is a service that brings together both the lower, middle, and upper schools, I had an eight-year-old who stopped me in the line after chapel to let me know that he had a question for me. So after we'd exchanged the customary pleasantries, the greetings, he looked at me and very earnestly asked me, just whose ashes were those anyway? <laughs> and I resisted the urge uh, to laugh because that was my first, uh, my first inclination because I knew if I did that, what I would teach him actually was not to ask questions because you might get laughed at when you, uh, when you did. And it was a very serious question for him. And so in about the 10 or 15 seconds that you have in that line, uh, because you can't hold it up for too long because everyone needs uh, to get out to get the car lined, I explained to him that the ashes that we use on Ash Wednesday, they come from the previous year's Palm Sunday celebration, that they're the palm fronds with which we greet, which, which we acclaim Jesus' triumphal arrival into Jerusalem. And then we take those and we burn them. We burn them as a memory both of that triumphal arrival, but really as a remembrance of the fact that we acclaim Jesus with those palm fronds. We lay on, our ex we lay on him our expectations of what we think his kingdom ought to be. And then the story of Holy Week is how we become frustrated and angry and then we betray Jesus. So we, we burn those palm fronds. And next year at Ash Wednesday, they're a reminder of that for us as we try to put ourselves in the right frame of mind to once again enter into Holy Week, to enter into Easter. And then that's, that's all the time I had. So I was rattling that off really quickly. And then I thought, you know, at eight years old, at second grade, if I had thought that someone was about to put ashes from another person on my forehead, I wouldn't have been up there because <laughs> I knew enough, even at eight years old, what you had to do to get the teacher's attention, uh, to get into enough trouble that you would be dismissed from whatever room you were in, sent to the office, and sent home. And that's what I would have been doing. And if by some uh, strange miracle I couldn't actually get the teacher to send me out, somebody would have been tackling me to hold me in because I, I would have been gone regardless. And so his question, it stuck with me. Whose ashes were those anyway? And I realized that at eight years old, 
in a very real sense, he got the meaning, he got the point of Ash Wednesday because if I'd had more time than 15 seconds, I would have set him down and I would have shared with him the explanation I did that literally those ashes do come from the previous year's Palm Sunday, but really those ashes, those are our ashes. Those are a reminder of our mortal nature. Those are a reminder of the fact that we are created by God. Those are a reminder as we say or as we hear when they're imposed on us that we are created from dust. And I share that not as something that is morbid or frightening, even as I admit to you that eight-year-old Joseph would have been very frightened by that thought, but that they're a reminder that God loved us enough to create us out of the dust, to breathe his very spirit into us, and to make us alive. And so every year at Ash Wednesday, we are reminded of who and what we are and of whose we are. And we're reminded that God loved us enough to give us that gift of his very presence. And that is what our readings this morning are speaking to us about. We hear the story of, Abr of Abram before he is changed, before he is transformed into Abraham. We hear the story of God's early promises to him of the covenant that he will establish with him and with all of God's people, of how God will work to create and to make for himself a people and call them into being. And we hear that reminder from St. Paul speaking to the Philippians, reminding them that they are to remember their identity being rooted in the cross of Christ. They're to remember their identity being rooted in the transformation that is accomplished through that, the, the gift of forgiveness, but the gift of new life of resurrection, and then we hear in our gospel lesson of people coming to Jesus, trying to warn him away, to let him know that Herod is already seeking him and isn't making a secret of it, and Jesus comes back and says, I have to be who I am, and he goes about doing the work of healing, of restoring, of renewing, of performing miracles, and goes on to say that yes, his work will take him to Jerusalem. His work will take him into the hands of Herod. But he isn't afraid. He's going to be who he is and share that no matter what the cost is with the world. And so this week, this Lent, I invite all of us to ponder the question, whose ashes were those anyway? To remember that those ashes are our ashes, to remember that we are a people that God was pleased enough to create, we are persons that God was pleased enough to create, and we're a community that God was pleased enough to call into being. Let us celebrate that good news in this Lenten season, and let us make ready to share that with the world. In the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, amen. amen.